Hello World of YouTube, welcome to list 3 of list week 2018. The top 11 best films I saw in 2018. Now, I had originally planned to make another top 6 this year, because I was like, you know, I had a lot of fun doing 6. I didn't see that many movies. Maybe that'll be just a nice little thing to end the year off on. But then I kept watching movies, and more movies, and more movies. I watched enough that I could have easily made a top 10. 11 you know so that's, that's what I'm here to do I still didn't see all the movies I wanted to see this year I didn't see the Coen Brothers Netflix movie I didn't see mid 90s and I didn't see eighth grade those are kind of the three big ones that I missed that I didn't get to see but these are 11 that I saw that I feel happy ranking as the best of the year while I still think Sasha Baron Cohen would have been a better pick for Freddie Mercury Remy Malik does a great job at portraying the Queen lead singer. Same with the rest of the band. I give this film a proper review. I think it is uh, one of the better biopics I've seen over the last couple years. And yeah, it's just fun. It's a fun ride with a great soundtrack because it's all Queen. <laughs> Ant-Man was kind of a sleeper favorite of mine amongst the Marvel films. And Ant-Man and the Wasp does... For it, what Winter Soldier did for Captain America, it's a big budget B movie. There's ants everywhere. There's so much fun. And I love that they get more absurd with its plot and its plot devices. On top of going all out with the wackiness of the resizing things and the suit powers get expanded to just everything can be big and small. And it's, it's charming. I'm a big fan of that, and I think Paul Rudd is as great here as he was in the first movie. So much fun, uh, a great ride, and a great break from the seriousness that was Infinity War. A film so successful, they're already making ripoffs of it. A Quiet Place is a sleek-looking, charming horror film that has a great vision a great set of characters, and a tight enough script to be a compelling watch both in and out of the cinema. And it provided one of the more unique cinema experiences I had all year because the entire audience was hell-bent on being as silent as the characters in the movie, which I think is a testament to how encapsulating the world within the film was. As funny as the first one, uh, the bits are better, the characters are more fleshed out. There's a great job at subverting audience expectations in ways that I feel like some people hated, but I actually really, really enjoyed. And Deadpool is hilarious as always. I like the addition of Cable. The ending of this movie is on par with some of the other great ends of films this year. And yeah, if you like Deadpool 1, like I did, you'll like Deadpool 2. It's definitely at least as good as Deadpool 1, if not better. This was a great year for Marvel, and Black Panther is one of the better solo pieces to come out of the MCU in a long time. I love the universe of Wakanda. I love the lore within the film, and I love how it talks about its lore. I think the villains in this movie are some of the best the MCU has churned out. And, I mean, dude, Chadwick Boseman owns that fucking role. And I think it was smart to have Michael B. Jordan be a great counterpoint to him. There's a lot of elements in this film, film that are great. Some of the humor, uh, but everything else built around that aces. I think everything from the director's choice who did some really sleek work behind the scenes and who curated the soundtrack who put together some really sleek cuts made for a cool ass looking big budget passion project which is what this whole franchise started as. Oh yeah. All right. One of the weirder cinematic experiences I've ever had. This film feels like a Mike Judge film had sex with a Michelle Gondry film. The vision is as quirky as, like, Be Kind Rewind, but the storytelling is as blunt as a Mike Judge movie. And it takes one of the weirdest turns I've ever seen from a movie in a long time. I get the commentary they're trying to tell, and I think it works. 
until it starts getting fucking weird. And then it gets, again, relatable, but then just batshit insane. Uh, I love the cast. I love some of the ideas in this movie. I think that they are really charming. Outside of that weird-ass third act. I like it. I like it for how weird it is. But I don't think it totally fits the rest of the fucking movie. Fun movie, great ride. It's on Hulu if you want to see it. And I I suggest people do uh, because all the performances in it are good. But Jesus Christ, is it fucking weird. Now many could argue this is just one of those annotated adventures YouTubers were doing a long time ago. But this is admirable because it is that. But the effort they put into the decisions you make and how different the story can go is amazing. I had a lot of fun watching this and I think that there isn't another franchise that could pull off this type of film like Black Mirror. I think Charlie Booker is a genius. Um, while it's not my favorite Black Mirror story, I cannot help but love the way that it's told. I'm a sucker for Choose Your Own Adventure books. I read them a lot growing up. And while I'm not the biggest fan of video games that do this, I think this is much better than that. I like how meta it gets. I think that that's also one of the reasons why I think it's, it's a step above a lot of those other things that try to do the same thing. It also shows that in a world where movies are now trying these proto-Black Mirror types of stories, no one can write it like Charlie fucking Booker. This is a fun thing to do. It's a fun ride. And if you're a fan of Black Mirror, you're probably going to like Bandersnatch a lot. <laughs> This movie had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. I think John Cho owns this fucking role. I think the story is so compelling. And this is how you do a film in this style. You know, I hated Unfriended. I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. It was a by-the-numbers horror flick. And this redefines thrillers it, it does a great job at taking a, a simple arc and doing interesting things with it through the way it tells its story I think that this would have been a much better introduction to people to this style of filmmaking than anything they've done in the past it is fun it keeps you guessing. It's also computer literate. It understands computer culture and it understands internet culture in a way that films that try to do this just don't get. And it goes in so many different places I did not expect. It was, it was a great ride and it's one that I will be showing to people who want to see one of the more interestingly made films of 2018. <laughs> I mean, it's the culmination of a 10-year ride I've been on since basically the beginning. I loved this. I recently started rewatching it because it's on Netflix, and I still was glued to the screen. I couldn't look away. There's, there's so much excitement that just hits me here as a huge fan of comics. I love these characters. I love what they've been doing with these characters in this universe. And I love that it built to this. And it wasn't a disappointment. Josh Brolin, great year for him. He was great in Deadpool 2. He's fantastic in this. Cannot wait to see Endgame. I think it sets up Endgame really fucking well. And... Man, it hit me. It hit me here in a lot of ways that part of me was expecting, but I didn't expect to be hit that hard with it. it there's a lot of fan service, and I'm not going to lie, I don't mind that. Uh, a lot of the movie is kind of fan service-y in a lot of ways, but I think they do it well, and the Russo brothers just knocked it out of the park. 
As I said on my EP catch-up, I recently watched this movie, and it was amazing. You can tell a lot of heart went into the direction, went into the characters, because Raphael and David wrote the movie. And you can tell they put a lot of heart into the story they were trying to tell. There's a lot of flair and a panache in the dialogue. There's a love of hip-hop in the dialogue that you don't normally see in movies starring rapper. This feels more real. This feels more like a, a slice of life through a stylistic lens. A lot of the a lot of the camera work and lighting is super stylish, and a lot of the a lot of the delivery of some of these more hip hop centric parts are very stylish, but they feel believable in how some it's of the done. best tense and comedic moments in a film I had seen all year, and it treads both lines beautifully. And there's actually a moment where both of those moments come to a head together. And it's so impactful because of it, because it ties into the themes the film is trying to lay out as far as the optical illusion it's based on and all that sort of stuff. And it just presents the problems. It try it takes a side, but it tries to leave it open for the viewer. And I liked that about it. I liked I liked this movie a lot more than I thought I would. I knew I was gonna like it, but I was just so invested in this from the minute these characters were interacting because the trailers show their friendship, but they don't show how well fleshed out these characters are. And that's that's one of the things I really like. I love the characters in this movie, and I love the way that they told the story. I think that if there's any movie that you need to see that came out this year, uh, aside from the number one pick, is Blind Spotting. Like I said on my games list, this has been a fantastic year for Spider-Man. He has had a great game. He's had his appearance in Infinity War. He has this. He had an arc in the comics that was huge. And if there's any way to bookend that year of Spidey, it's with a movie like this. There's a lot of heart. There's a lot of great usage of its characters. There's a great framework built around the mantle of Spider-Man. The villains are compelling. The animation is gorgeous. And this is just a movie that, again, like I said in my review, gave me a gambit of emotions. The twists and turns it took me on were some of the most exciting I had seen. And maybe it's because I'm just a diehard Spider-Man fan, but this is what I wanted to see in a Spider-Man movie if it didn't have anything to do with his origin. I liked Homecoming. I thought it was a great continuation of Peter Parker and a, and a great reimagining of uh, him on the big screen. But, man, I love every aspect of this movie. Uh, you know, and that's... that's it's, it's hard to pull off this type of superhero movie nowadays, I think. But I think Sony knocked it out of the park. I think that the the comedy is good, the, the tension is great, the emotional, impactful scenes are there, and even some of them, they don't dwell on them. They just let you think about them. It's such a well-made movie, and it's the most fun I had at the movies in 2018. That was my list of my top 11 films 2018. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, the next list coming out tomorrow is my top 20 favorite songs 2018. Hopefully you're looking forward to that, but I'm going to go. I have been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lots of situations, and I'll see you tomorrow and another day.